Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back. Today we are going to be getting into all of my Lenormand decks and playing card decks in one go. Because I don't really have, I mean, you know, <laughs> depends on your school of thought, but I don't really have too many of these because both of these are one, newer systems to me comparatively, and two, ones that I don't use tons. So, let's get into it, and of course, well, we're gonna start with Lenormand, because I have more of those. And of course, we have to start with my two decks from the Lenormand Supreme Logan from Larkin Legend. I have two of their, oh my gosh, no, sorry, three! Three of their Lenormand decks, which are my absolute favorites. I totally recommend any of their decks if you are just starting out with Lenormand because they have the most amazing guidebooks and they're just fun. So let's start with the Pink Sugar Lenormand as my camera <laughs> does its best to adjust. This, oh my gosh, such a pretty, pretty deck. I love what they do with the foiling. Um, this pairs so nicely with their Black Salt Tarot, which is pretty much why I bought it, because they were so lovely and sent me a review copy of the Black Salt, and I was like, I need, because <laughs> I had been eyeing this one for a while, but like I said, since I don't use Lenormand too often, I, you know, it's hard to justify, but I use that as my excuse. And also this pink, this pink is so amazing. There's also a sibling deck, I suppose you could say, to this one, the Black Salt Lenormand as well. So, it, oh my gosh, it's kind of cool because it feels like there's these two different vibes you can pick from. I love that card, so good. But naturally I had to go with the pink one. I just love, I love the different takes, Logan takes on the cards, I think. They're always so genius and different from deck to deck, which is amazing to me of like how they can continually keep looking at Lenormand in such a creative way. So that is the pink sugar Lenormand to be followed by the precious possums in this, how cute is this bag? Oh my gosh. So actually this is one of the Moonlit Fae wrap ones. Andy got this one for me. And got this Lenormand for me, I should say. Um, where am I starting? Oh, I must have done a reading. And put it backwards in here. <laughs> so this... Oh my gosh, I love the edging on all of them too. So this is completely possum themed. And so adorable. Now this one, I will say, I feel like goes in a bit more of its own direction, but only because you have a lot of different significator cards to choose from, but they all have these different personalities. It's so cool. So it's, I imagine the purpose is to kind of look through the different personalities and relate one to yourself. You have a bunch of different options to relate to if you're asking about any other specific person. However, I like to just shuffle them all <laughs> in since I don't really tend to necessarily a lot ask specifically about other people. So when one of them comes up, I'll read their personality description and usually it'll either come up of, in a way of something I need to embody or it just makes me think of a certain person. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? This deck makes me so happy. Of course, I'm a possum lover. So it just, <laughs> I loved this card being in there too with the possums because I have so many blue jays that visit my yard. Basically from when I was trying to attract crows, I attracted blue jays instead. And since they are both in the Corvid family and very territorial, um, crows will not come near my house. <laughs> they kind of stay in the trees and stuff, but... My blue jays are very territorial. So now I have blue jays that I feed, but also possums and deer. It just, it really makes me think of what I call my outside friends, <laughs> but I love it. So that is the precious possum, Lenormand. 
in this bag. Ugh, it's just too, it's too cute. We will tie that up later though, because why make you wait longer? Okay, and last but not least, their latest Lenormand project, the Lilac Lenormand. Now this one, to me, reminds me so much of, and it's definitely inspired by a lot of Japanese art, but it makes me think of Studio Ghibli, Sailor Moon. It, it's just so fun because you can see the inspiration in here. I love this. I should say too that Logan does an amazing job at having the significator cards be very gender neutral, which is just so helpful. And I love this whole idea of the different players, the different switch uh, controllers. Also, I love this card because I have, still have, this Game Boy, but this was my first, no, I had the generation before this, but this is the first Game Boy I really remember playing on, and I loved it. So I love all the video game references, it just, if you are someone who loves just Japanese media, video games too, you would just love this. Oh, like, look at this, it looks like a, um, a Persian, the Pokemon. I love it! And that's so Sailor Moon. Oh my gosh. I love it so much. And the cardstock on this one. I will say, um, the other two are, there. it's all beautiful cardstock, but if you like to riffle shuffle your Lenormans as well, this is definitely the easiest one to riffle shuffle. So, that is the Lilac Lenormand. So beautiful. Alright, next up we have also the latest deck from Joanna Nelson, the Little Monsters Lenormand. So this is a Lenormand deck themed around the Monstero world. And I love everything about this one as well. I like that we get the playing card symbols up there. Not that I do anything with it, but <laughs> as I learn more, I'm hoping to just know what that means. Because <laughs> I'm also learning... Um, playing card divination, so I imagine the connection will start to happen someday, but I love, love this one. This is another one, very easy to riffle shuffle, so it's definitely a thinner card stock than her usual decks, but her art style is just one of my favorites. It makes me so happy, and this deck is no, no exception. I love these monsters. I love this world. The yellow, when there's yellow and pink together, oh my Yellow, pink, green, favorite color combination. So yeah, this is such such an amazing deck. I love it so much, and I love the backs. They're so cute. So that is the Little Monsters Lenormand. Next, we've got the Anna Kay Lenormand. This is such a great one. The guidebook for this is so good, but how beautiful is this artwork. I love, we get two different lily cards. There's a winter one and a summer one. So you can kind of switch them out if you want. I think I kind of just keep everything shuffled in together. But Anna Kay's artwork is really something else and something about, yeah, there's the other lily. So I just keep them all shuffled in apparently. <laughs> but I love this one. The This art is probably also just some of my favorite. And totally, of course, different feel than the previous Lenormand's shown. So it kind of just depends on the mood. But I love this. I love the medieval kind of fantasy feel, but also not like, you can also picture all of this stuff in real life. I don't know. There's something about that. I just, I just love. It's such a gorgeous Lenormand. So that, oh my, wait, hold on. Favorite card. The Clover card? <gasps> Have you seen anything like that? Come on. Come on. So that is the Anna Kay Lenormand. Ooh, I don't know. Okay, I'm throwing around a lot of things of like my favorites, but I feel like since I am so, like I don't really bring in a lot of Lenormands, <laughs> I love like all the ones I have. Okay, okay, okay. So Yuletide Tales. This is the older version. There is a newer version. That is so gorgeous, but, and I was gonna get it because I just 
feel like I'm a Faina Laura collector. This is by Faina Laura, by the way. Um, but I just, I'm so attached to this one. I, I love it so much. The backs are everything. So as it suggests, this is a Yule themed Lenormand deck. And it's filled with so many different folk tales surrounding the holiday. It's so much fun. I have her um, Yuletide Tales storybook as well, and it's really fun to pull one of these cards, and she uses the same artwork to find the full story for these cards is so much fun, but I love how this feels so Christmassy yet witchy at the same time. That's what I love about her artwork, especially in her Lenormans. It feels very magical and witchy. So that is the Yuletide Tales Lenormand. All right, next is this, I don't know what this is called, because it's just called Lenormand, but it's this with the blue owl on the front. So there's that. This is one, I had a little guidebook with it, it's somewhere. This is a very just classic Lenormand deck, and this is one that tends to pretty much get used for spirit readings, ancestor readings, I don't know why, but that's just where it landed itself. Someone, <laughs> some ancestor I have seems to just really enjoy what's going on with this one because I've tried to use other Lenormand decks. I like to use it as kind of confirmation of yes, no sort of thing. Um, but nothing, nothing happens with any other one. They just, they like this one. So that's really what it gets used for, but it's a good one. It's again, it's a very classic Lenormand. I like the artwork. It's a good one. So whatever that's called with the blue owls on the back. It just says Lenormand on the side. <laughs> All right. This is the, the Paper Oracle by Eric Mail, same artist as the Ink Witch and the Endless Oracle. This is called the Paper Oracle, but it is pretty much Lenormand. I think there might be some extra cards, but there, well, there definitely is. This seems kind of thick to be, I don't know, but mostly it's Lenormand cards. So this is one that feels, how magical is this? That's what, it, um, Eric Mail's artwork feels very, uh, like fantasy magical. I'm trying to describe what happens in my brain when I see their art, but what it reminds me of is, and oh my gosh, I shouldn't describe things, <laughs> but how it relates in my, or, or really share how it relates in my brain, because I never mean to be, like, it's all compliments to me, but I don't know. Anyway, what it makes me think of, for some weird reason, is the magic that happens in, like, the Barbie movies, <laughs> like the cartoon Barbie movies. Um, that, I don't know. I have no idea if that's a real relation or that's just a weird connection my own brain made, but that's what happens there. But I love this one. It's so, so beautiful. And I love, I always love the fantasy. Oh, how cute. I love the fantasy feel. So that's the Paper Oracle. All right, two more Lenormand decks. Next is my other Faina Laura deck that is very, ignore the marks on it. This is the Nocturnal Garden Lenormand. This was my first Lenormand deck, I wanna say. And it's gorgeous. Again, her artwork just, let's focus. Her artwork just never misses. I love it so much. It has such a folk art feel. That is so magical, and I love how just spooky and I wouldn't even say I like using this in October for Halloween season, but it really doesn't feel strictly Halloween to me at all. So this is one I'll use year-round when I just want that 
darker kind of witchy feel. That's where this one lands for me for sure and I love it so much. Look how, oh, it's so fun. I just love looking through this artwork. It's so beautiful. I love that cat. So good. So that is the Nocturnal Garden Lenormand. And last but not least for my Lenormands is the Celtic Lenormand, which was a lovely gift from Jess, who is now, I think, Empress and Basil on Instagram. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. Was Jess Reese cards, but this is a really, really fantastic, fantastic Lenormand deck. Great mass market option. I realize that otherwise I did not have mass market options, but if I was going to pick one, it's this because I love how customizable it is. It comes with a lot of different card options. The guidebook is so thorough, so fantastic, really great for learning. And I love, I love the feel of this one. It's very summery to me. So this is one I tend to mostly use kind of in the spring summer. I love pairing it with a lot of my Celtic themed decks. Although of course that's kind of <laughs> very wintery, but otherwise, I don't know, summer feel to me. It's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Is this, who does this art? Yeah, Will Worthington, of course. So of course I'm going to love it. So that is the Celtic Lenormand. So now I think I'm going to take a pause finish my morning tea and be back later to do the playing cards. Just kidding. I want to finish now. <laughs> playing cards. So this is an interestingly, <laughs> I didn't realize I had this many playing cards, but I guess to, mm, well, I don't need to be fair in anything. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Let's just go. This, how, okay. Come on, are you kidding me? This was a gift from Sandy. This is the absolute cutest little tiny playing card deck I've ever seen in my whole entire life. And how, like the pink, oh my gosh. I need to, oh, I need to, I need to compare it to something so you can all see just what I mean. Okay, okay, here, I've got my, albano weight tarot. So this is a standard tarot size. Are you kidding me? It's so cute. It's so cute. You know who would like this? <laughs> is Meg from Rose Honey Ritual. I feel like she loves little baby tiny things just like I do. But it's a very, you know, typical playing card deck on the other side. Oh my god, look at the animals though. Oh, they're so cute. They're so cute. But how fun. Often I'll just, especially now that I'm learning. Um, so clearly this is an order. I haven't used it yet. But now I'm thinking now that I'm learning cardamancy. This is going to be my bag deck. Because I feel like playing cards is something that um, it's easy to kind of do a reading on the fly. I don't know. That's my thought there. So let's keep keep it rolling. This is, okay, I've got two decks here. Let's do those first, actually, that are in a playing card system, but so you can use it for kind of standard cardamancy. Right now, I don't because I don't know the system super well. So this one is the, uh-oh. <laughs> hmm, I love the bag I made for it. But what are you called? What are you called? Oh my gosh. Hold on. Amazon. Amazon, help me. <laughs> Eek, I'm scared. Okay. I don't even know like enough to like, get the name. We're searching playing card oracle because it that's kind of what it is. Oh no. Oh, I'm gonna have to look for the guidebook, aren't I? Gosh darn it. Alright. Hold on. The doors of Somlipith is what this is called. And this is a, uh, this is a mass market deck. Let's get back in your place. Oh my gosh. Actually, in both of these in this category are mass market. Here are the backs. 
So this is a 54 card playing deck. It's a little hard on camera to see the titles, but they do each have a title. This is kind of a playing card deck that has been made into this fantasy world where each of the suits is like a different royal family. Every card is a different character. So what's cool about it is, but you know, as you can see, we have the playing card association. So you can use it for cardomancy, but you can also really just use it as an oracle, which is what I am doing right now. And it's, it's so fun. This art has such personality and each of the characters has such personality. It gets a little dark in places, so, you know. But it's a really, really cool deck and it comes with a big guidebook. That is really, really great. So this has been such a joy to use. I'm loving this one. So that's the Doors of Somlipith. Oracle, I believe it's called. But it is a playing card. Playing card system. And the other I have in that category is the Conjure cards. Which is kind of supposed to be like Appalachian cardamancy. So it is a playing card deck with these images in the background. And then comes with an, a nice guidebook that gives sort of quick meanings for upright reversed. And it's really, really interesting. I haven't totally landed on how I like to use this. And I think it's more so that cardamancy is so straightforward. So kind of here's what it is. It's going to tell you things that you might not want to know and I think it's more so that I just need to get used to that. Get used to not <laughs> always hearing nice things. Not that I always hear nice things from tarot, not to say that, but you can kind of, it, when you're interpreting tarot I feel like you can soften the blow a bit for yourself, but with, with this you cannot. So it's really, it is a cool deck. I enjoy it. The Conjure cards. Alright, now to get into the rest of my just standard playing card decks. This is one um, my friend Erin sent me in she is Little Shop of Lo Light and Love, I want to say. She sells crystals. She sells beautiful crystals. And I think I bought one from her and she put this in the package, which was so nice. But it is a playing card deck with all crystals. So what's really cool about this, this is one that could be used as a an oracle too because you get the playing card but there is a crystal and keywords on it which is really neat. Uh, I haven't used this one to really discover if the crystal associations match up with the playing card association but I'm really curious to figure that out because it is really pretty I, I don't know that I would I mean I think it's cool as a crystal deck for sure but I do already have that other crystal deck that feels similar so this is one that I will be though excited to use in a cardamantic way so that is it's just like a crystal playing card deck I don't know where it's from I imagine just the internet somewhere <laughs> I don't think this doesn't seem like one that's you know like expensive in any way uh yeah that's what it looks like okay next is a deck that a lovely viewer sent it's the dapper cats playing cards so cute so cute oh my gosh <laughs> i love the colors of this deck but also can we just anthropomorphized cats are my absolute favorite. I love them. I think it's great. I love their little outfits. They are just these dapper little cats. And then otherwise, even with just the like kind of standard playing cards in the deck, I love that we get this different style, these different colors. It just switches it up in a really fun and nice way. These nice pastels. It's gonna be a fun like springtime kind of deck. I don't know. It just it's got a sassy energy to it that I think is so fun. So that is the Dapper Cats playing cards. Okay. 
Next is the Robin Hood playing cards. I love this one so much. So the decks I've shown so far, I have, well, aside from these Doors of Somnopith and the Conjure cards that I use a bit more in an Oracle way, the, no, okay, hold on. Let's show this one first. This is the Little Reaper deck. So the playing, standard playing card decks I've shown so far, I have not really used for cardamancy as of now. I love this deck though. How cute is this? This one I have used in kind of the Halloween season and just tacked on tarot associations um, since I, I'm not super confident with cardamancy yet. I love this. I backed this on Kickstarter because it's just so cute. My older sister who does not read tarot but the one who dies yarn for me. <laughs> um, she saw this, me using this some, probably on my Instagram, and immediately went out and bought it because she just was like, it's so cute. And it is, it's so cute. I imagine if you were playing a card game with friends and you brought this out, oh my gosh, how fun would that be? I love that there's a different image on every card. So you could kind of use it as an oracle too, just by looking at the image. And it's just, oh my gosh. I love this one so much. It's so cute. That's the Little Reaper playing cards. So now these next ones are ones that I do use for cardamancy. So let's get back to the Robin Hood playing cards. This is one I wanted to, or I bought because the other two are kind of pricey, <laughs> pricier playing cards. So I wanted a playing card deck that just felt like... I don't know, one I really wanted to use for divination purposes, but maybe, but was a little less, uh, I didn't want to worry about ruining it, basically. So I got these Robin Hood playing cards, which, oh my gosh, I've been loving so much. I love the color. I love the images on the court cards. It just, I, I don't know, I love this kind of parchment-y style, and I like the font and the symbols how it feels kind of hand-drawn or almost embroidered. It's really, really fun. As of now, too, I kind of combine cardamancy with tarot decks or oracle decks, so I like how this one pairs with a lot of different things. It's such a good one. And not to say, it's probably not, a, it's, you know, you can get a playing card deck for like a dollar. So this wasn't a dollar, but less expensive than the next two I'm gonna show. So that's the Robin Hood playing cards. I got these off Etsy. I think from a shop called Rare Playing Cards or something like that. And I love, I love how it opens. It's so fun. It looks like a book. Come on, get back in there. Okay, cool. So this next one was also a gift from a lovely, lovely viewer. It is the Usi Pagan by Usi, the Pagan playing cards. So I think this edition of it is out of print, unfortunately, but you can still buy the Pagan playing cards. It's just, it might be like a slightly, I think the backs are just different colors, honestly. I think that's all it is. So no biggie. But this is probably my most, or it, I shouldn't say probably, it is my most used deck for cartomantic purposes. I love this. I used it. If you saw my how I do ancestor readings, uh, I incorporate playing cards, and this is the deck I use for that. This lives on my reading desk. What did I do to that card? I didn't do anything. Oh my god, it's just the art. <laughs> they made it look kind of like this stained watercolor paper. It's so gorgeous. It's that beautiful kind of pagan other worlds artwork. It just feels special and luxurious and I love it so much. How pretty is that? Oh, it's so pretty. So that is the Pagan Playing Cards by Usi. And last but not least, for my playing cards, the Cursed and the Crooked Playing Cards. I backed these on Kickstarter uh, and it, this was even before I was totally learning cardamancy. I just so fell in love with the artwork. Look at these backs. This is very kind of fantasy themed. It feels very like medieval trolls. 
and I love the borders on these. It really makes the deck look so visually interesting on a table, and I think a lot of the times that's the trouble I have with playing cards is when you get to the just sort of main number cards, I don't know, sometimes I'm like, ooh, but they look boring. <laughs> so I like getting ones that kind of have some visual interest to me, really. So I like when there's like different artwork on every card or these kind of big borders. But I love this playing card deck. This is my probably second most used, but honestly, th this deck has a really, the best way I could describe it, it's got a very mischievous energy. I do think it brings a fey energy through. So, because when I've used it, it really, I don't know, it feels like, it feels like there's this kind of biased voice to it that is very sassy. <laughs> so sometimes I can't, I just feel like I can't use it because I'm like, well, I need to get, get the, like the right answer. You know what I mean? So it's, feels mischievous, but I love it. So that is my last playing card deck, my friends. Next time we'll get in, we will get into my special collections and that will be all. So I will see you again very soon.